But now to some numbers. It's going to get a little technical now. I'm a scientist. I love to actually give you numbers. You've seen none yet. One quick passing idea, though. You may not be familiar with one of our tools we use very often. It's called a time series graph. You can imagine recording temperature on your back patio once a day. And you can table these data, just have a table of them, date, temperature. But you also can graph them with time moving along the horizontal or x-axis and the thing you measured moving along the y-axis. Each point can be a dot. You can connect the dots, dissolve the points, and you're left with the essential linear, sort of the essential line that represents what the data did. We use these graphs because they can visualize a lot of data real quickly. 15 pages, five years worth of temperature data here, just for example, all shown conveniently in one graph where you can immediately see the rise and fall of the seasons. You're about to see some time series graphs. To the numbers then. We first look into the past. We looked from 1910 to 2005. 2005 being basically more or less the present. There, there's some practical reasons we didn't run right up till now in 2013. And our subject of investigation again was the Verde Valley seen here. We define the Verde Valley to include Sedona, Clarkdale, Cottonwood, Camp Verde, Rimrock, Cornville, etc. Uh, there are definitions that vary. Uh, this was our definition. Uh, and most notably, moving through the Verde Valley, to my mind notably, is the Verde River, moving from the middle left to the bottom middle here, as you see the red flow direction arrow. It enters the Verde Valley at the area denoted by this uh, red triangle. It is where the water enters the Verde Valley. It's already a perennial year-round stream at that point. It flows through the Verde Valley, picks up additional base flow and flow from Oak Creek, Beaver Creek, West Clear Creek, and then it exits the Verde Valley at the lower triangle, um, the pore point, if you will, for all of the water and sort of the accumulation of all the effects that can happen to the water, the base flow in the river. You might observe them at this point. We ask the model a series of questions. We conduct experiments. And the first one is a simple question. Model, we find you apt to the task at hand. Would you please tell us what, at the upstream gauge, we call this the Clarkdale gauge, the entrance to the Verde Valley, what was the base flow in the Verde River between 1910 and 2005, as you simulate it, model? It produces the data. We graph the data, and we see something like this. Time moving along the x-axis, and on the y vertical axis, base flow in acre feet per year. An interesting unit. If you're not familiar with it, we'll talk about some ways to convert it in a minute. Uh, and note that the graph doesn't start at 0. It starts at 30,000. We do that just so we can tease out and see the differences, the details. And there are differences. Base flow is not constant. It changes over time. And in this graph, it changes because of many stacked human effects. It uh, went down in the uh, human and natural effects, I should say. It went down in the 1950s because of a drought. It went up in the 1970s because of a wet period, a lot of precipitation. But built into this graph also are the effects of plants and the effects of people on base flow. It's a lot of things all stacked together. We wish to disentangle them. And so we ask the model a clever second question. We say, model, we find you apt. Tell us, what would base flow have been at the Clarkdale gauge if there never had been any human stresses in north central and northern Arizona? No groundwater wells, no septic tanks, anything of that kind. No stresses on the groundwater system. We produce this line. It is higher. There is more water than the line below it. And for mathematical convenience, we can subtract these two lines. A little easier thing to look at. You subtract the two, produce one line, and this is what we call the relative change in base flow attributable to human stresses, namely groundwater pumping. And we see that in 1910, there were no human stresses on the groundwater system to speak of. The change was zero. But then as we move forward through time, starting somewhere around 1940 or so, base flow begins to decrease. And by the year 2005, we can measure the difference between zero and the final resting place of that line and see that it is a decrease of about 4,900 acre feet per year of base flow. 
at the Clarkdale Gauge at the upstream end of the Verde Valley, and this is attributable solely to human stresses, namely groundwater pumping. We have subtracted out all other things that can change base flow, leaving only this. We move then to the downstream gauge, the Camp Verde gauge, we call it. It's downstream of Camp Verde, past Beasley Flat, near the Verde Falls, the poor point, again, of the Verde Valley. And we ask the same question, do the same graphs, same math, and we produce this line. It is similar in character, but different in shape and magnitude from the upstream one. Here we see, moving from left to right, it begins at zero. But by 2005, there has been a decrease at the downstream end of the Verde Valley of about 10,000 acre feet per year, attributable to human stresses, groundwater pumping namely. If you're not familiar with 10,000 acre feet per year, here's some handy quick things I came up with, some, some clever conversions. If you're a kayaker, you may be familiar with cubic feet per second. Other people besides kayakers too, but 10,000 acre feet per year is about 14 cubic feet per second flowing at a constant rate all year long. It's also about 6,200 gallons per minute, or cleverly, about 2,500 shower heads running at full blast. It's about a two and a half gallon per minute shower head. This is an interesting one. It's about an Olympic sized swimming pool every two hours, actually a little less than every two hours. And also, it is 12% of the base flow that we measured at the Camp Verde downstream gauge in the year 2005, or, or that the model said was base flow there in 2005. So it is 12% roughly. Not 50%, not 90%, not 100%, about 12%. Humans have changed base flow.